Hey, it's Amethyst Virgo. So we're going to do another transit video, Jupiter and Pisces. I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about this. I have um, I have a video about when Jupiter and Saturn both went into Aquarius um, several months ago, and I mentioned that Jupiter would be going to a Pisces in May. Now, this is a very short transit. As we can see, it's only from May 13th to July 28th. So definitely take advantage of this energy. I always find that Jupiter and Pisces can be very beautiful, inspirational, very motivating, very intrinsically motivated type of energy as a reminder Jupiter is the original ruler of Pisces so before Neptune was discovered Jupiter was considered to be the ruler of Pisces so there's a special relationship between this planet and this sign now some themes that we might see spreading awareness as a reminder Jupiter is is a planet that is considered a social planet sometimes we'll call it an outer planet as well but it's technically a social planet um, and, and basically along with Saturn they're both social planets but Jupiter is not really your personality trait now Jupiter conjunct the ascendant the first house or something like that can magnify your personality we can kind of see some of the the disposition a person has to their their Jupiter sign however what we're talking about here is Jupiter's impact ability to spread awareness it's generosity think of Jupiter as your Jupiter sign your Jupiter placement is going to be what do you personally want to give everybody right so I have Jupiter in sixth house so I am pretty good with structure and organization and helping people find solutions to things um, and I have an inquire in Aquarius I I'm the type of person where I'm like just get the job done but do it in the way you need to do it as long as it gets done as long as we get that big goal done it's okay to um, look at things differently so that's why um, when I interpret charts I find it helpful to look at the person as an individual and um, when I'm teaching students um, I understand what everyone needs to learn but I also understand the individual as well so that is an example of what we mean by Jupiter is what you want to give it's not always a personality trait but for some people Sun conjunct Jupiter we're gonna see it more in you now with that said the point I want to make is Jupiter is going to collectively impact us as a society in some way and again we only have a little bit of time to do something with this energy for some people for some of us it's going to initiate healing right spiritual healing um, resolving wounds from the past you know diving into creative pursuits perhaps for some people launching projects that are beneficial to the collective or people Pisces is not a selfish energy now again when I say energy we are not talking about your great-grandmom we're not talking about your great-grandpa we're not talking about your brother we're not talking about your ex any Pisces person you might have an issue with um, I don't have an issue I have a Pisces brother I don't have an issue with him <laughs> you know so um, launching new projects that are beneficial to other people right your creativity can be used to expand we're not talking about the Sun we're not talking about the Sun in the 12th house we're talking about Jupiter and the ability to expand and give and offer certain things to society or other people around you the the, the gift of generosity okay so now we're gonna dive into understanding what I've said earlier was um, now the thing is sometimes in astrology you see things used interchangeably right so sometimes people say well Jupiter Saturn Pluto Neptune Uranus um, am I missing one I feel like I'm missing one I have to be missing one um, are um, those planets are the outer planets because they are the ones that are slower the transits are slower and those are the planets that um, you're gonna notice like again if you were born within a certain year everyone that you know is gonna have that same placement or people even born within a couple of years before you or after you might have the same placement um, can't tell you how many other people I've done readings for recently we all have Neptune and Capricorn now obviously their degree is different obviously their house is different obviously they might have squares or trines or grand trines or whatever to Neptune um, so anybody born in a cluster of years is gonna have the same outer planets now Jupiter and Saturn move a little faster right their transit is not 12 15 years 25 years like some other planets um, so that's what I just want to be clear and sometimes you will see some people call Jupiter an outer planet um, the outer planets aren't as much the social and the outer planets don't have as much to do with your day-to-day -day personality like the moon or Mars but just wanted to mention that now look at your natal Jupiter's relationship with Jupiter with transit Jupiter okay meaning if you have Jupiter in Gemini and now Jupiter's in Pisces well that's squaring each other so there might be an opportunity there to challenge yourself to do something new and I'll talk about squares in a moment um, when viewing horoscopes understand your own charts relationship here's what I mean you're gonna see people make videos about Jupiter and you're gonna see some astrologers talk about Jupiter yay Jupiter's expansion and wisdom and knowledge and all these great things and you're gonna be like oh yeah yeah finally I'm gonna get what I want you have to you know what I'd say all the time I'm a realistic astrologer I'm a realistic person I'm a realistic spiritualist um, we can't just sit and just you know sit in a room and say I want this thing we have to actually go and do some things as well 
And so I always encourage people to take some control over their life. And of course we can add manifestation and all these other spiritual things that, to it if we need to. Um, but the point is um, be careful because you're gonna see some very positive things being said about Jupiter. But if you have Jupiter squares or Jupiter has been a hindrance to you um, and you haven't felt the, the benefits of Jupiter, maybe this is a time where you have to work on that healing process instead of thinking that Jupiter is gonna give you a bunch of gifts and a bunch of money, okay? So really understand your own chart's relationship with Jupiter before you make assumptions about what that's gonna mean for you. Now, here's some important dates. I might be missing some. If I'm missing any, I'll put in the description or something like that. Um, so one, we already know that um, we are currently, when I'm doing this video, the, it, a couple of days ago, you know, Jupiter just went to Pisces, so it's at the zero degree right now. Very raw energy. Zero degree is not even one. Raw energy is waiting. It's like waiting. Ever played double dutch? <laughs> it's waiting to go get, 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 get busy. So, um, on the 21st, okay, the sun is going to reach Gemini, okay, so G Gemini, um, so that's when it's going to be zero degrees, so they're going to be both together, like, you know, obviously con um, squaring each other, I'm sorry, so then Gemini will square Jupiter and Pisces. Now, what I say about squares is this, I know that sometimes we get afraid of squares and people are like, oh my gosh, I have Mars square Pluto, what's going to happen? Um, squares can be great sparks for change and initiation. Um, it sometimes can mean we are too comfortable, right? A, a trine, a conjunct, that can be too comfortable. Let's be honest. The way in, our greatest stories are the things we have overcome. Our greatest stories is, oh, wow, man, I started off with only five people subscribed to me on YouTube or someone started off with three customers or someone started off working as an assistant and now they are the CEO. You see what I'm saying? So we, everybody's greatest story for the most part has a little bit of challenge in it. So we shouldn't fear squares all the way. Now, challenging oneself by working through conflict, that is how we get better. We, and that's why I feel like with squares, it tells you the things you're gonna have to overcome in life and sometimes that's okay. Um, with mutables, we have to be careful. So the mutable signs we have, Gemini and Pisces, both can slip out of your fingers. Different than mutable Virgo, Earth, or mutable fire, where that fire, we can't, it's hard to put that flame down. But we're dealing with air and water, both of which can dissolve very easily. If we're thinking about water, I can go boil some water right now and it evaporates, right? Um, we have to understand air is gone in a minute, right? It gusts of wind and then it's gone. So that's symbolically what we have to think of here. So with the mutable squares, with Gemini and Pisces energy, use it as an opportunity. Those ideas that get sparked, that inspiration, how do you do it in a way where it allows you to keep your vision. The thing with Jupiter and Pisces is this vision that we can share with other people. If you're working on a project, so what if it's not perfect yet, right? We're not dealing with Virgo right now, <laughs> right? So what if it's not perfect? You know, share what you've been working on. Share it with people because this energy, people are going to be a little bit more receptive to it, perhaps. Um, you know, and with Pisces and Gemini together, don't get consumed by the possibilities, right? You're going to, you know, there's a lot of ideas, um, wanting to be seen as someone who has a lot of different ideas, but sometimes you do have to hunker down and don't forget the main mission. Now, there will be some dates where the moon is in Pisces. Now, again, we would have to look at the degrees to see how close they are. Obviously, the farther you get out of that, the later the degree is going to be, meaning, um, so for instance, um, the Jupiter, the, the farther we get away from Jupiter and Pisces, when it's about to go back into its old sign, it's going to transit, it's going to be going all the way back, right? Um, and when it goes all the way back, we're going to start to see it dissipate a little bit more until it goes into Aquarius, okay? And so with that said, um, with these dates in particular, obviously there's going to be certain dates, um, certain times of the day when the moon is in Pisces, where it's more conjunct Jupiter, really giving you that maybe inspiration from inside. So those are some important dates to perhaps look into. Um, then we see at the 28th, on the 28th, it transits back into Aquarius. Now, in between that, you do see, we do see that June 20th, Jupiter retrograde. Now, with the Jupiter retrograde, what I think is interesting is, again, I've, I said before, is retrogrades are opportunities to revisit something, to look at something again. Um, you might notice that you're so consumed by going forward with the vision that now you have a new opportunity to wait, stop, pause. Maybe you didn't anticipate something right? Maybe you have to rework something. Maybe you have to go back and tweak that vision. You have to tweak it before you can release it again. So a retrograde doesn't always mean turmoil. Oh my gosh, everything's crazy. As I said in the other video, businesses don't stop doing work. Now businesses, I think some of these businesses do use astrologers because if you look at the timing of when they release certain things, it sometimes is very um, coincidental. But what I'm saying is things still have to get done whether we're in a retrograde period or not. So it's just important for you to take note of that. If anything starts to change or feel a little bit different, it could be because of that retrograde. 
now the 21st of J July. Um, now, we only have a few days. You only have a few days of this because then Jupiter goes back into Aquarius on the 28th, but Venus goes into Virgo, and we know that Pisces and Virgo are oppose each other. Um, Virgo and Pisces oppose, so... That could be an interesting dynamic to those couple of days with the relationship, with the things that you value, really putting value on things and understanding, appreciating what's around you. Um, looking at it in a new way that you maybe never looked at it before. Perhaps having some type of epiphany um, around that time of what you value. Because Virgo's able to look at the small, minor things. Now again, Venus in Pisces is exalted. Venus in Virgo is considered to be um, in Dutch of uh, in fall. So it is important just to note those two dynamics there of that date and Jupiter and Pisces will square the moon when it's in Sag or Gemini. We have to remember that, right? As the, as the uh, months go by, um, anytime it hits those placements, it's going to square them. When it hits Virgo, it's going to be op in opposition. Now, again, we know degrees are going to be the, the biggest indicator of the energy because the farther you get apart in degrees, the less potent energy supposedly is. So note for those using Placidus like me. So I use Placidus when I am talking about transits and for general public, I tend to use whole signs. It makes it neater and cleaner to talk about. But however, when I get down with the charts, you know, I default to Placidus. With that said, if you are, I've talked to some of you about this before. If you're a late degree rising sign, um, you will notice that sometimes your trans are closer to the next sign. So you have a person that's like, I'm, you know, you're a Libra at the 29th degree. Well, you know, you basically should just call yourself a Scorpio rising. I'm joking. Um, but when you have that late degree, you're going to notice your transits look similar to the other sign <clears throat> next next to it. So it's important sometimes for some of you, you're going to see me do this these predictions, and I'm going to say, um, this is for this rising sign. But if you are a late degree sign, you probably should look at the one next to it. To fully know your own horoscope, you should cast a transit chart using your birth time data. And there's a lot of different sites that allow you to do that. Um, and then you're going to see what I'm talking about. But again, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to kind of rock with this using a whole sign approach. Um, knowing that if you ever got a transit reading with me, I use Placidus in, unless you request for me to use whole signs. So, and what I've done here is interesting. It's like I have included these. Um, let me go back. Um, what I've done in this reading is something very different. Um, not different. I just typically don't include tarot cards in these types of readings. Um, but again, like tarot is my base. It's what I started off doing. I started off doing tarot readings for people um, before I did any astrology reading. So um, I don't know. For some reason, I was like, let me just pull some cards and see if the energy aligns with what I'm telling folks about these transits. Now, again, you would have to look at your whole chart to see how this could affect you. So now there is a possibility there is a world where you're Pisces rising. Um, however, you know, you have Jupiter in that house, but it's not in Pisces. Again, we're using Placidus, but right now I'm keeping it clean, simple. Let's just talk about Jupiter in the first house or if you're a Pisces rising. Healthier sense of well-being, you know, healthier sense of yourself. Um, Jupiter can bring more cheer, can bring more optimism um, to the experience that you have. Um, less stress is projected on the outside world. So people might view you and see you as less stressed. Um, you're less worried about something or you're just able to show a different aspect of yourself that perhaps you haven't been um, in a long time. Um, because Jupiter in Pisces has this kind of, let's just get, let's just be at one. Let's just find what we're, we're, we feel comfortable being in the zone and let's just do it um let's just live within our our inspiration you know let's just do that if you were to think of like 24 7 just like meditation would be like pisces energy right being at one and then you kind of wake up when you have that bright idea and you go do it that's pisces energy um but we're talking about the first house of identity this could be a great time for anyone who wants to release or share anything about themselves that they've been holding in or hiding from someone um this could be a great time to kind of release that because energetically people might even be more open than what you think they are or energetically, you're going to feel more at peace with this decision and less judged. Um, the Four of Coins came up. Release and share what is valuable about yourself. Typically, the Four of Coins is about holding on to something, right? But with this, Jupiter and Pisces, we're not holding on anymore. Jupiter allows wants us to give and release and just literally wear something on, our, on us, right? Um, Jupiter is that fancy coat that we're seeing um, and we're able to visually see what it is that makes someone happy. And so four of coins is in this sense to, you know, the way I'm interpreting this is release yourself, um, allow yourself, whatever is valuable about you, whatever you've been holding within, let's, let's see if there's opportunities to express. And it doesn't have to, it can mean there's just something positive that you've been working on. Again, um, a project, something that's meaningful to you could be a great time to open that up. 
Now, Jupiter in the second house or Aquarius rising, would you start or initiate something that's very meaningful. Um, it should be something that's a part of your goals. You know, you could be the person that's like, I've always wanted to do this. Or you simply make a move. I don't think every transit means something phenomenal and huge happens, right? We're not saying in two months, you're going to make the most money you've ever made in your life, but you might start to see things kind of signs that you're in the right direction. We do know that Jupiter does deal with that kind of prophetic energy, um, that kind of wisdom, knowledge, and Pisces is tapping into that collective con unconscious energy. Pisces is relating more to that imaginative slash um, understanding the true purpose and integral meanings of life type of energy. So when Jupiter is in Pisces, that's why I love Jupiter in Pisces as a placement. Um, but what we're seeing is Jupiter being in Pisces in the second house. It can allow you to really open up more opportunities for what you want. This is less about money, but more about your sense of peace and well-being. You could even find a person that maybe quits their job at this time. And you might be like, why would you do that? But it's because they're they're following what they truly want. And eventually you're going to land on your feet anyway. Aquarius Risings, Aquarius people um, have a, an interesting way of, of still meeting the same goal as a Capricorn, right? But still doing it in their own way. So don't assume the person is lost. Don't assume you're lost. I'm not telling anybody to quit their job without a plan. But I'm saying this is an example of what you could perhaps see. Um, I know an Aquarius rising right now where this person is about to transition into a new job. They've, they're leaving somewhere. They've been for almost a decade. They're leaving somewhere and they're going for something new. That, But they it, it helps them be more stable in their foundation and go away from something that wasn't benefiting them anymore. So that's what we're talking about with Jupiter and Pisces is like you, something is going, you need to ease up and do something that's going to give you a better sense of purpose and direction in terms of your foundation. And long term, you're going to see this benefits you as well. The moon card came up, which is stuff definitely about following your hunches, internal insight, you know, knowing fully what you want is going to be important in order to listen to yourself. A lot of times people don't listen to themselves. You listen to the news or not the news. I mean, it's okay to listen to the news, but you, you listen to what society, I guess you should say, society tells you to do. You listen to what your friend is doing. You listen to this person. You're on Instagram. You're like, oh, they did that. Let me try it. You really got to listen to yourself. And Aquarius risings are typically, that's your motive anyway, is doing things in a way that is... It, not the same as everyone else, but you still are willing to go about your own sense of getting the same goal or the same achievements that other people may um, not outline for themselves using tradition. Now, um, Jupiter in the third, find peace in your surroundings and motivation all around you. The third house, we are dealing with um, familiarity, where we are, where we are, our immediate environment can be that. And um, you might learn through experience and studying something that goes beyond the facts. And the third house is typically objective. This could be the person who goes back to school. I've always wanted to do this. This is my dream. I've always wanted to go learn more about this. This could be the time to do it. And it doesn't mean you finish what you're doing right now. It means you're sparking it. You're using the energy that's already with that placement. Let me give an example. You stumble upon an old book that reminds you of something you wanted to learn, leads you to enlightenment, right? You, you, you know, somebody can be like, yeah, I used to be into learning about this other religion, but I just never did it. And then you just start to get more involved. And now you realize, oh, there's online communities of people whom I have similar beliefs. Um, you know, I think compared to decades before and years before, you have way more ability to find like-minded people than you ever have um, because of the internet. So, but Jupiter in the third allows for you to open up your mind. Don't be so objective, um, but understand that, that there's a lot of knowledge that you can sit with and, and understand how it becomes a part of you. Um, allowing yourself even to, in some, to some degree, um, you know, giving yourself more opportunities to go outside of what you're used to learning about and just saying, I just want to learn about this. I just, you know, let me try to take this class. Let me go do this. You know, because Jupiter can be more adventurous energy, risk-taking energy, and Pisces can be, again, it's mutable water. It doesn't have form. It's willing to take form when it finds a stream it really wants to go down symbolically. So that's just an example. And, you know, I said, let your mind roam. You know, the Empress card came up, goddess energy, you know, full creativity like this. If you have Jupiter, Jupiter transiting your third house right now in that Pisces. This is a time to really dive into something new, not restrict yourself, not be worried about the goal. Oh, but what if this doesn't make money or this isn't going to help me achieve? Like sometimes some of our best experiences are just being, just being within ourselves, learning something new, understanding that we're adding to our own awareness. 
Jupiter the fourth, Sagittarius rising. So family expansion, planning, or emotionally charged energy that includes resolving conflicts. For some people, if there's a need to heal, if there's a need for family therapy, whatever it is, this might be the time. If there's been something you haven't been dealing with and it's been emotional, this is the time to really maybe take that time. Um, past issues need to be resolved. You know, the fourth house can be connected to the past. Okay. And so Jupiter, you can often see um, family expansion, meaning moving, um, new children added to the family, something like that. Jupiter also means spiritual experience of the family, literal or spiritually inclined. Um, if you are someone who does do ancestor work, this is the great best time to do that ancestor work. If you've been waiting for an answer, if there's something that you want to do, um, if you're into that type of work, this might be the best time as well. If anyone has passed over recently, or if you notice anyone does pass over at this time, Jupiter in that fourth house can kind of bring that spiritual awareness. You might be more willing or more open to connecting to that person on the spiritual realm. And I know some people don't like to talk about death and things of that nature, but all of us, I mean, if you're an adult, you know, even if you're not an adult, like I was, an, I experienced, I saw a lot of, um, not physically saw the death. Luckily, I didn't see a lot of trauma directly in front of me, right? I didn't see people being murdered or anything like that, luckily, but I do know people who have. Um, but my point is like, I have experienced a lot of death, but a lot of that was more natural causes or, you know, it wasn't something, it was traumatic, but not a tragic death. You know what I'm saying? Um, and Jupiter and Pisces, if that does happen, if there is anyone that passes over it, typically it's going to be peaceful, a peaceful death or something like that. And again, people don't want to talk about that. I'm not telling you that this means this for you. Um, you know, you would have to look at your own chart. That's why I tell people what's going on in your chart before people jump to conclusions and get upset. Don't get upset over anything that doesn't line up for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just like, like to, in my work, I have to tell you all the possibilities so that nobody's surprised. Like, oh, well, you didn't mention this. Well, I can't mention everything, but uh, I want people to understand the full range of astrology and the possibilities. So even if you look back at your own transits, have you ever had, I have had someone pass away. I'm very important in my life when Jupiter was transiting my fourth house. Um, so that's just something just to keep in mind. Um, four of swords. It's different than like a tragic death or like a, every death is tragic to somebody, but you know what I mean? It's different than like a, you know, a murder or violent death that usually is shown through like a Mars or Saturn type of situation. Four of swords, seclusion. Seclusion for what is extra, extra, extraneous. If something does not matter, and it's hard for you Sag Risings because I'm, I get it, I get it y'all, I get it, I'm a Sag Moon, but like everything is a possibility and the approach that you have you can juggle a lot of different things and you're probably a very busy person but you might notice with this transit that you just kind of want to slow down you want to process what's going on around you, you want to understand what's going on around you you might start to get some wisdom and some answers that you need to have with your family um this might be a good time to kind of do that diving um if there's anything you don't understand about your family dynamics or any knowledge that you need to have and you know having that conversation with people because it what doesn't matter there's certain things that don't matter and so what i mean is like you might find it's more important right now to kind of learn some of the things that you need to know and not focus as much on all the other things that could be going on in your life. That doesn't mean pause. It just means that some of you might notice you're spending a little bit more time with family issues um, or your own emotional issues this um, during this transit. Now, Jupiter in fifth, you would have a Scorpio rising or Again, if you don't have a Scorpio rising, it's because you're a late degree Sagittarius rising. Um, identify what inspires you. You know, mission to find yourself can start now. You know, so many people talk about they want to find themselves. They feel lost. You can find a person who's so successful, but they're still not happy. This is a great time because the self-discovery piece is really integral with um, Jupiter. And Pisces, again, Pisces is it has the, Pisces can be anything and nothing at the same time. I think, again, the underrating of certain signs. Every single sign is important. Every single sign has a power. And when you learn that, you're going to be so much better at astrology. You're going to be so much better at manifesting with all the signs. You're going to be so much better at that when you understand the purpose of every single sign. You may revisit past pursuits. The reason I say past, the five of swords came up, past defeats. But look, the fifth house is a place of opportunity, all right? Um, unions, flings, the, to feel a sense of inspiration. Um, you know, so Scorpio rising, some of you tend to have very, um, you know, experiences that have been very um, dramatic feelings, very intense feelings, um, whether it means something you were undertaking or relationships or things of that nature. And since the fifth house can deal with that, there could be like somebody comes back from the past or something emerged from the past. Um, you might feel a certain way again. For some people, it could mean you feel there's a new romance or something new attracting you to something that gives you a sense of peace. It also gives you a sense of inspiration. Um, sometimes conception can be favorable with the Jupiter transit. 
for some people because uh, Jupiter does tend to mean children. So for some people, again, if that's what you're into or it's what you're looking into, again, um, you would have to go to your actual doctor to know, you know what's going on with your own body. But that's a possibility. Just wanted to mention that. Jupiter in, Le in the sixth house. So if you have a Jupiter or Pisces is transiting the sixth house, you would be, again, that late degree, um, Scorpio or that Libra rising early degree. Um, finding ways to add more inspiration to your daily life could be very important right now. The sixth house is the house of routine. It's everyday things. Sometimes it's the things we don't really want to do, but we know they're important for us getting all the other things we want. For instance, you could have a person that has placements in sixth house showing they have to work on their relationships. They have to put a lot of effort into it, but then you see that they have favorable relationships. That's because they're willing to put that work in. Or you can see a person that um, has a lot of energy in their sixth house, um, and they, but they're successful in their career. That's because they're willing to do the daily life stuff to get them there. Um, this can mean taking a break or experiencing a break from anything too strenuous. Um, it can mean like find something that brings you a sense of peace. Um, find you, not everybody else. Cause sometimes a lot of times Libra rises, you get caught up in the affairs of other people. Your approach to everything is to be fair and impartial, but you want to stop perhaps and desire more sense of direction in your own life. The temperance card came up, which deals with patience. You know, it deals with you understanding how to look at something in a new way. Pisces is mutable energy. You might want to find ways to fix, mend, bring something to your life that allows you to feel a sense of hope. If you are a Libra rising who's experiencing a lot of diff difficulties at the time. All right, so this is for the Virgo rising. So, however, let me just add a little caveat. You could be like me. I'm a Virgo rising as well. But because I have an interception in my chart, Virgo shows up twice in my chart before it hits my seventh house. Therefore, um, I do, obviously I have Pisces on the seventh house cusp, but Ju but actually because of the way my degrees and everything's aligned, Jupiter and Pisces is actually transiting my sixth house in Placidus, not my seventh house. So that's why I say people always, you can always look up your trends online to kind of see what's going to resonate the most. So you could be like a Virgo rising like me where you're like, this actually in whole signs doesn't make sense, but this is not, um, in Placidus, you might be like me and your Jupiter and Pisces is actually transiting your fifth, your sixth house. Um, pay close attention to people who bring an essence of spirituality or sensitivity to your life. Um, Jupiter is one of those planets that can show, um, you know, benefits when it comes to marriage, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to something that kind of opens up your world a little bit, right? That's why we can also sometimes see Jupiter transiting someone's fifth house. I'm going to do with children. Jupiter brings gifts. It bear comes bearing gifts. And so remember, it's not a personal planet, so a lot of what's going on with Jupiter tends to be more experiences, but um, you can attract more meaningful circumstances, more meaningful connections with people. You know, this is the time to, if you are seeking, and again, I don't think you have to go out on a limb and try to go find someone if that's not what you're trying to do. And a lot of times these circumstances find themselves. You might meet someone at this time and it might not even become anything big until later. The Eight of Wands is about um, signals, receiving signals. It's a fiery energy and it's when we are receiving something. So it is very important if this is resonating with you to really understand this is that time to really open up and have more awareness. Um, if you are a more spiritual person, if you have some spiritual practices and you're looking to be in a relationship and you know, maybe this is a time to do more uh, manifesting, really making a vision board or writing down the traits of what you want in a partner, whatever the case may be. Um, there also has to be an open awareness. This also could be a great time to heal and put some energy into repairing some of your relationships, repairing your one-to-one -one relationships. Maybe this is a time to start therapy with your spouse. Um, maybe this is a time to look back on past relationships, especially when Jupiter goes in retrograde and say, wait a minute, you know, I had a fallen out with my best friend five years ago. I had a fallen out with my brother. I had a fallen out with this person. It wasn't that big of a deal. Let's see if I can revisit this union and bring our, us together to heal this relationship. Now, the Leo rising. So Jupiter would be in the eighth house. Again, look at your transits to see if this is the case. Um, renewed faith or understanding. We think of the eighth house is that kind of transcending type of energy. And the eighth house is more of the, it's the change that is going to bring about the most permanent energy in your life. You know, we talk a lot about change. We talk a lot about the, the, um, the mutable houses and the, you know, or AKA the cadent houses. But when we look at this Leo, when we look at the eighth house, it does require us to understand more of the permanence of things that are going to maintain and stay. Um, epiphanies are more likely to occur because Jupiter can be about that spiritual insight as well. And the eighth house is a very deep, intense, emotional commitment. So for some people at this time, it could be 
an awareness it opens up some opportunities to really learn especially when people who are really more into their spiritual beliefs or religious beliefs or whatever the case may be and um, this is a time to really devote yourself um to really understand and take in all the experiences that you have in order to turn them into wisdom to turn to situations that you actually can control situations where you're actually committing and devoting to something that you want the wheel of fortune card came up the keyword the wheel of fortune card tell is fate right think about that that jupiter that pisces energy that is a very fate driven type of energy it's about looking at what has happened and trying to piece it together and to internalize all the wisdom that you have so for you guys it is more of a spiritual awakening perhaps um in this particular circumstance now um the jupiter in the ninth house we're dealing with cancer rising Okay, if you're cancer rising or you're someone because of your degree that your Jupiter is now transiting your ninth house, um, you might feel more willing to take on new chances. I mean, we have, to, we have to understand that cancer risings ruled by the moon. It is about comfort. You know, there's a certain level of comfort um, kind of being where you usually are because that's where you feel that you're the most impactful, perhaps. But new situations arise that may be beneficial um, and you take them on as ways to feel more connected beyond just what is familiar. So this is that time to take that new chance, to take that leap of faith. Faith, to dive into something you've always thought of doing and this is the chance to do it you know allow yourself to open up and allow yourself to be willing to the two of coins juggling a lot there's a lot that you're juggling but this is also something that could help you in the long run and you for you to also feel that you're moving forward in a way that helps you be more stable as well and we think of the two of coins as that pentacles energy of that earthly energy you know being able to look at the different possibilities and then starting to actually allow yourself to take on new chances for the gemini risings the star card came up we know with the star card in tarot it is about shedding material things not caring about the material aspect and caring about the internal feeling of simply um noticing your growth and feeling like you are just glowing and you're in your essence as the star card in tarot um, it's shedding those material objects, it's shedding those shallow things, and it's really about the ha internal happiness that you, you can, you're able to um, bring to yourself. There are less feelings of pressure needing to perform. We do talk about the 10th house as obviously being about, you know, our reputation, status, goals, you know, goals that are actionable, goals that lead to us being successful. However, um, you understand that certain experiences allow you to feel internally happy, right? So for some of you, it could be like, there's a small win, there's a win in some area of your career that is about you maybe even overcoming something. Um, you feel less doubtful about what the future beholds. And for some people, it could even be taking that move, taking that that next step and saying, I, you know, I'm, you're transitioning to a new job. You are, you know, you made a decision for yourself. Maybe you're someone who's like, you know what, I'm gonna take less hours so I can focus on my real goal, my real dream. Whatever that case, whatever the case may be, it allows for that flexibility and that understanding of yourself. So the tenth house in this essence becomes less about the reputation, the status, and everything else. What can sometimes happen is Jupiter does beget gifts, so you could see like elevation in some way. But it's not just about the money. So even if you do find that you are rewarded, you're giving a raise, giving a raise or something like that, it has become a part of your vision. You get what I'm saying? It's not just about something tangible in your hand. So that's just something just to keep in mind for you guys here. And if and it also for some of you is creating your own opportunities. Um, it, again, what I want people to understand, this is a very short transit and what you do has to be carried on. We can't just sit here and say, oh, Jupiter's in the 10th house for me. Great. You have to take on new opportunities that are going to be things you actually can uphold once Jupiter moves right back into Aquarius or once some of these other transits move into other signs. Now the Jupiter in 11th. Okay, so these would be our Taurus rising folks. Um, again, you could be a late degree. Um, you could be a late degree Gemini rising and see this as well as in your chart. Um, you're better, you benefit more freely with pure associations, right? We do see that Taurus energy a lot of times is more so focused and fixated on the pleasantry of things. And the pleasantry for Taurus is familiar friends, familiar people, things that require you to know what to predict, you know what to expect, right? Not as free flowing as maybe the Venus part of Libra, but this is a good time to join an organization that causes or causes that speak to what you find important. This could be a time if you are a person, let me give an example, a person who is on a spiritual mission might need to join some spiritual groups online or go you know to a meetup i don't know you know or it, you could be at this time you find you have a really good support 
team. Maybe there's something difficult you're going through in your life or something you didn't expect. Um, and then you notice that the people in your life are there for you, are, you know, um, willing to, to help you along the way. Sometimes you see Jupiter um, transit the 11th house. I mean, friends throw you a party or friends come together. They throw you a housewarming. They do something for you, you didn't know was possible. And the thing is, I think that's so important with this energy is the Knight of Wands come, coming up is... I think this is a beneficial time. Again, the thing about a Taurus rising person is typically Taurus is always on the move to something new, except Taurus isn't moving as fast as these other signs. So a lot of times people don't even notice it until we see at the end, wait a minute, double take. Taurus, wow, they, they moved themselves up? Wow, Taurus has that nice house? Wait, Taurus has, yes, because we have to remember this is earth, but it is steady earth and it, it, it allows things to accumulate. So the Knight of Wands is about your goals. It's about your mission. It's about finding something that these associations will help you in some way with your long-term goals. And your goals don't have to just be about money. It could be, maybe you want a different role in life. Maybe you want to feel that you are adding value and substance to something and you're able to identify more with a certain group of people. Or you're finding that, um, you feel that relationships and friendships are less strenuous at this time. Something comes along that makes things a little bit more peaceful in some way. Now, the Jupiter and Pisces, last thing we're ending off here, we have a lot of wands showing up. Wands showed up for the last three signs. Um, so we're definitely dealing with the last three signs um, that I'm talking about, this energy, this action-oriented energy. For And how befitting that the Aries has wands, right? Now, what's interesting is I was find it very interesting when Aries energy people have placements going through the 12th house. You can make decisions more connected to a sense of faith and spiritual dominion. We always think of, of Aries in a certain way. Oh, they're in, they're, they're independent, they're engaging, they're, you know, they're a risk taker, they're, they're not, they're willing to kind of take on new things. But when we put a spiritual aspect to Aries, it becomes the Aries person focusing and funneling your energy. The beautiful thing here could be that, remember, Jupiter, okay, Pisces is assigned to the 12th house, right? So if you erase the whole chart, we know that Pisces is the 12th house, twice the 12th sign. Um, Neptune ruled, obviously, but Jupiter is that original ruler of Pisces. And so anytime I see Jupiter and Pisces to in the 12th house, this is a great time for Aries rising people who want to understand the power in your spirituality. Instead of just doing things, learn to funnel your direction. You're already a cardinal energy. You already have that cardinal energy in you as that Aries rising or that approach. So it's not that you're necessarily an Aries sun person, but the rising allows for us to do things and approach life in a certain way based on our experiences especially with that first house cusp we already know that <clears throat> so um you care less about being first and more about internalizing the knowledge you have to create powerful actions so it's less about your impulse and there's still things you're going to need to do aries risings right this is not saying that um because of this one transit that everything else falls to the wayside but the king of wands is showing power in new ways allow yourself to open up and see the ways in which you can have more direction instead of just doing things and saying oh check box i did that i'm adventurous it's about aligning to your true purpose and it allows you to really understand and be able to make some waves in ways that help you feel more successful and more grounded in the work that you do to bring forward um, a new sense of a new renewal. You know, there's a renewal energy. I feel like with this Jupiter and Pisces, especially with you guys having that Aries rising dynamic as well, that fire energy that's already within your chart. So that was it for this video. Thank you for watching. Um, again, I do advise people, you know, look at your chart, pull up your transits because it may be different than this because I did this doing hold signs. And as you know, in my chart, I already know Jupiter is not in the seventh house like other Virgo rising. It's in my sixth house, um, Jupiter and Pisces. So I um, just wanted to share that. Um, if, if this resonated at all, please hit the like button. Thank you for watching.